girls and welcome to Kids Church this morning. Kids Church is going to be awesome, so I'm so glad that you're here. We're going to go right into worship, but before we do, we have to warm up. So you everybody up on their feet, come on, come on standing up with me. Okay, this week's warm up is very difficult and might make you feel a little bit sick. It requires a lot of moving and a lot of spinning very, very fast. Here's what we're going to do. We're going to run in place for 10 seconds, then we're gonna spin 10 times, and then we'll see if we can run in place for another 10 seconds, depending on how we do. Okay, you ready? All right, on the count of three, we're gonna run first. One, two, three. Okay, running in place, 10 seconds. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven. Get ready to spin. Eight, nine, 10. Start spinning. One, two, three, four, five, six, Seven, I'm getting dizzy. Eight, nine, ten. Okay, see so if you can run for ten seconds. One, two, three, four, five. Keep going. Six, seven, eight, nine, ten. Awesome job. I'm all ready for worship. Let's worship together. My check. One, two, one, two. Are y'all ready? Yeah. Are y'all ready? Yeah. Y'all ready? Yeah. Press play. Oh. Thank you, thank you, thank you. Ladies and gentlemen, welcome to Build the Word, the game where you, the audience, play a very real part in trying to create words based on the letters that you are given. 
For example, you start with the letter G. There's really no words that you can build with that, unless G, I really ought to take a bath. But now I'm gonna give you another letter. Now you have the letter O. What's a word that you can make out of G and O? The answer is very obvious, it's go. As the game goes on, however, more letters are gonna come into play. You might have the letter A. Well, how are we gonna put A in here now? Well, we can make it a go, like a long a go. And then at the end, I've got a T. What am I gonna do with it now? Very easy, I'm gonna move the A around and I'm gonna make goat. All you have to do is come up with a word that uses all of the letters that are in the middle. Think you can do it? Let's find out. Can you make anything with those letters? And let's add another letter. Ran. We're gonna add another one. Ooh, a B. What are you gonna do with that? You could turn it into barn. Or if you like crunchy cereal, bran. Here's the next one. That's toughy. You had to think really hard about that one, right? There's one letter left. What are we gonna do? This is an easy one. Just put it right at the end. Brains! Were you able to get all the way to the end? Let's try it again. See if you can do it this time. What can you do with a T and an A? You can make at. What's gonna happen next? Ooh, an N. You can make ant. Or if you're feeling summery, get a nice tan. Here's the last letter. Oof, a W, that's tough. But, I think you'll really want to get the answer this time. How was that one? On a scale of one to 10, how do you think you did? Here's the last round. Think you can pull it off? We're gonna start with the letter O this time. Oh man. What can you make with those letters? Or, like we could play this game, or we could just all go home. Here's the next one. Ooh, a W. That's a tough one. Row, 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 row your boat. You know the song. Here's another curveball. Oof. Letter E. Where are you gonna put that in here? War. Like he wore his favorite shirt to the ball. Last letter. Oof. That's a tough one. A T. How are you gonna put a T in this word? Okay, so how do you think you did? I knew all the answers ahead of time, so it's not really fair for me to say that I did well, but all things considered, I did do very well. Hope you guys enjoyed it. I'll see you guys again real soon. The Bible. It's 66 books of history, stories, letters, and poetry that fit together to form God's one big story. The epic adventure of how he created us and loves us so much that he made a way to rescue us. As we travel through the Bible, from Genesis to Revelation, we discover people who met God and found their lives changed forever. Now, for an amazing story, inspired by the book of 1 Kings, chapter 18. Israel was ruled by many kings who didn't listen to God, but King Ahab was the very worst. He even built a temple to a false god. Everybody worship Baal. Hmm. He is very great because, I don't know, he can make it rain and stuff. What? But the Lord sent a prophet named Elijah to deliver a message to King Ahab. As the Lord lives, there will be neither dew nor rain in the next few years, except at my word. You pipsqueak. Baal can make it rain. Also, off with your head. Elijah quickly departed the palace, and at the Lord's direction, he escaped and hid east of the Jordan River. For three years, there was no rain in Israel. Impossible. 
But I won't allow it. Bail, make it rain this instant. Crops failed, rivers and brooks dried up. King Ahab was desperate. In fact, his wife Jezebel even hunted down most of the prophets of God that were left in Israel. Off with their heads. But through it all, God provided food and water for Elijah. In the third year of the drought, God spoke to Elijah again. Go, speak to Ahab. Then I will send rain on the land. You do realize he wants to kill me. Okay, here goes. As Elijah traveled to the palace, he met King Ahab on the road. Is that you, you troubler of Israel? I haven't made trouble for Israel. You have. Yeah, well, I'm rubbing your glue. Whatever you say bounces off me and sticks to you. You've abandoned the Lord and followed Baal. <laughs> what else? He's more popular. You want a showdown? Fine. Gather all the people and meet me on Mount Carmel. Oh, oh, and bring all the prophets of Baal. Oh, you're on. King Ahab sent a message throughout the land, and the Israelites gathered on Mount Carmel, along with 450 of the prophets of Baal. Uh, how long will you go back and forth between two opinions? <laughs> if the Lord is God, follow him. But if Baal's God, follow him. I'm the only prophet of the Lord left, but Baal has 450 prophets. Hey, get two bulls for us. Let Baal's prophets prepare one of the bulls and place it on an altar to Baal, but not light it. I'll put the other bull on an altar to the Lord. The God who answers by fire, well, he is God. What you say is good. The prophets of Baal prepared a bull as a sacrifice and placed it on the altar to Baal. A Baal, this is for you. Light this bull on fire. Hey, Baal, answer us. From morning until noon, the prophets of Baal danced around the altar, calling on their false god. <clears throat> hey, shout louder. Uh, maybe he's asleep or, or on a trip. <laughs> the prophets of Baal danced harder and shouted louder all through the afternoon. But there was still no answer. At last, Elijah stood up. Enough! Come here to me. Elijah took 12 large stones and rebuilt an altar to the Lord. Then he took the bull and sticks of wood and placed them on the stones and dug a deep trench around the entire altar. He turned to several of the Israelites and said, Fill four large jars with water and pour it on the offering and the wood. You do know wet wood doesn't burn, right? Just do it. Now do it again. Do it a third time. The wood became so wet, water even flowed down the altar and filled the trench. Lord, the God of Abraham, Isaac, and Jacob, let everyone know that you are the one true God. Answer me, Lord, so these people will know that you are God and that you are turning their hearts back again. There was a long moment of silence. Everyone waited. Breathless. And then, fire fell from heaven onto the altar and instantly burned up the wet wood and the sacrifice, even licking up the water in the trench. The people fell on their faces. You mean? God! The Lord is God! Woo Terrified, the prophets of Baal tried to escape, but were captured and wiped out. Elijah turned to King Ahab. Go, eat and drink, for there is the sound of a heavy rain. Though the sky was completely clear, in a short time a tiny cloud appeared. More clouds joined the first. They turned dark and black. The wind rose, and fat drops of rain splattered onto the dry earth for the first time in three years. Filled with God's strength and joy, Elijah raced ahead of King Ahab's chariot to the city. God had done the impossible. Hey everybody, I'm in my chair 
And it's been a long day, so I'm gonna get myself a quick sip of water before we start. Now, because I'm in this seat, you know what is about to happen. I have a suitcase right here that has an object inside it. And in whatever this object is, it's gonna help us remember the bottom line for today. Today's bottom line is that God can do impossible things. So what do you think would be an object that I might have found in my house that's gonna help us remember that God can do impossible things? Maybe a giant unicorn, because they're impossible. Oh, it's a mug. It seems like a kind of ordinary mug, doesn't it? It's got the front, it's got the back, it's got the little holder. It seems like an ordinary mug. Not, there's not very many things that you can do with this, apart from drinking. But see, when God comes into our lives, he can do impossible things with us, even though we're just ordinary. So, for example, I have some water in this cup. I'm gonna pour it in. Get all of that nice water in there. And I think when God takes us, when he takes ordinary things, he can do impossible things with us. It's kind of a fancy cup, isn't it? The cup didn't look like much. It didn't look like there was much we could do with this cup. But because we have God on our side, we're able to do impossible things. So that's what this mug can remind us of. Hopefully, you can find a mug like this on your kitchen shelf. But in the meantime, I'll see you again next week, and we're going to talk about what other stuff we've got going on. Now it's time for... Reveal the Question! Let's open our mail and see what question there is for us this morning. So here's what we're answering together. Does God still do miracles today? Just like our Bible story today, we learned about an awesome miracle that God did. So the question is, does God still do miracles today? Yes, he does. And in the Bible, we read a lot about different miracles. Jesus, when he was on earth, healed a lot of people. He healed people that couldn't see, that couldn't hear, that couldn't walk, that were dead, and he brought them back to life again. So Jesus healed a lot of people when he was on earth, but he did lots of other miracles as well. God still does miracles today. He can still heal people. He can still do amazing things in people's lives. So he, he still does. Does God do miracles for everybody? Does God heal every single person that's sick? No, he doesn't. And sometimes it's really hard for us to understand why certain people in the Bible got amazing miracles, but maybe we didn't, or we knew someone who really prayed for a miracle and they didn't get it. So if you need a miracle in your own life or know somebody that does, we can pray and ask God to give us a miracle that we need in our lives. And ultimately, we pray and we trust God that he's gonna make the right decision because he knows us and he loves us and he knows the plan that he has for us. So if you need a miracle, you can pray and have faith and God will always, always hear your prayer. But yes, God still does miracles today. Well, that's it for Matt. Matt, this way. Bye, Over guys. Here. No, no, this way. Okay. That's it for Kids Church this morning. We hope you enjoyed it. See you next week. Bye. Bye, guys.